So I'm going to talk about the uh, information extraction and I'll be using uh, slides from uh, Christopher Manning, Stanford uh, professor. He's the guru on uh, uh, NLP. Uh, so I'll be covering uh, three topics. Uh, so first one is called name entry recognition. Second one is called entry linking. And third one is my own work uh, in the center uh, that we looked at in uh, looked at uh, uh, beyond the state of the art uh, task defined. Uh, so, a uh, little bit of uh, how this uh, built up. So, the information extraction uh, has been uh, in very high interest in early 90s uh, with the big funding from DARPA and they had uh, conference dedicated to uh, information extraction which is called uh, message understanding conference. Uh, so early 90s they have uh, focused on basically on entities and events, uh, those kind of things. So basically they were, uh, as DARPA they were uh, interested in uh, identifying terrorist activities, organization changes in uh, uh, articles. So in order to do all these things you need to identify entities, relationships, uh, date, time and all these things, right? So that's the, like uh, earlier it was the entity and that level but uh, within like last, it's been like 25 years, right? So, so many different uh, aspects of text uh, became interest to the people, uh, starting from entity relationships and then uh, a lot of things like sentiments, emotions, now uh, sarcasm, uh, yeah, so many subjective information, objective information, uh, people are working on each of these things and on top of that, we have lot of different kind of data. Uh, the thing is, let's say you have a solution to extract entities from a, from a text, right? Let's say you know how to get it done from news article. You know how to identify uh, who are the persons, who are the locations, who are the organizations mentioned in news article. That does not mean that uh, with the involvement in the social media, people use totally different kind of uh, uh, writing styles, right? So they will come up with very creative ways to express different things. So, so the technique that you have developed for uh, uh, the news articles will not work on your uh, social media posts. So you can see uh, the problem in two dimensions. One is you have different kind of different aspects of the text that you, you are interested in extracting entities, relationships, let's say sentiment, uh, sarcasm. And then on the other, other side you have different kind of text coming out. Uh, let's say news, it's a forum and that is different from social media post. Uh, so that gives you a very uh, big uh, space to work on, on information extraction. So one of the fundamental tasks uh, is the name entity recognition. So let's get uh, to the, uh, what is information extraction is. So it's basically defined as extra automatically extracting structured information from unstructured data. So structured information are the things that I just uh, talked about like entities and uh, as you can imagine like there are so many different uh, usages of this thing, right. So let's say you are interested in uh, 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 interested in learning about a particular person let's say uh, the Indian uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi right. So if you search on Narendra Modi on, on Google then you need to get the Narendra Prime Minister of India, right? Not everybody else. So that means that Google need to understand Narendra Modi as a Prime Minister, whereas there have been more, many more Narendra Modi in India, right? So you need to identify which article talks about the Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi. So that's the information that retrieval task. Let's say you want to identify different events. Let's say a football match, right? What's the, uh, where, where is the, the football match today? So in that case, you need to identify uh, the uh, which football match. Let's say it's in uh, Bengals versus somebody, and then you need to identify uh, what's the uh, the location and all. So you can imagine so many different uh, applications of uh, once you extract the information, then we are able to do uh, so many things with that. So uh, and this is a day-to-day -day scenario that you see in your mails. Uh, whenever somebody tells you, you know, let's meet tomorrow at noon or something, uh, Google is able to identify, okay, this talking about that type, right? 
right? So it will pop up a small widget saying that can I add this to the, the calendar. That means Google understood that it has an event scheduled for the tomorrow noon. So if you say, yeah, do it, then it will basically add the entry to the, the calendar. So this is still an information extraction task. So, so if you go to the web, uh, extracting information from web is, uh, is a harder problem. Because uh, the fact is that, let's say, uh, given that it has a vast variety of topics being covered every day, so many people write on web, so uh, they have different writing styles. That means the complexity of the data in the web uh, is huge so that you have focus on different things at, at a given time, right? So this is, uh, earlier we used to work on uh, uh, like particular documents, news and all this thing, but now we are working on web as the, as the corpus. Yeah, I think I talked about why it is useful. Okay, uh, so one of the, the other thing, uh, so information extraction and you have information retrieval on the, on the other hand. So earlier, uh, like let's say five years back, not, not even five years, like two, three years back, when you do the query on Google, it will give you the, uh, the, uh, the, the documents, right, that matches your query at best. So they basically try to match your query with the with the document and try to come up with some ranking of that. It's uh, but the, uh, that's called information retrieval because you are basically retrieving a set of documents that matches your query for the uh, the uh, that matches your query. But in the extraction, you you identify particular segments of the text and say that this is a person and this is an organization. So this is tough. Because let's say here are, he has given like three nice examples here. Uh, let's say uh, it's a real. Uh, he's talking about a real estate one advertisement, and uh, these things like a real estate agents. These are the real agents name, but it sounds like a town or suburb, right? Because you can have names that are common to uh, locations plus persons, right? So here now you have the scenario that you don't know which one it is. And here uh, the face is like only 45 minutes from particular place, right? So that has different semantics than saying uh, para, para month, right? So this is 45 minutes away from that, right? Uh, and then, <coughs> yeah, so yeah, if you take a, 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 a property, you can have multiple uh, suburbs within that within that property, right? So in a particular advertisement, you may have, uh, let's say, Dayton, but doesn't mean like it has multiple suburbs, right? So these kind of uh, things challenge uh, in, uh, in, a, in, in, so basically this is about uh, the, what we call the disambiguation. Uh, this is ambiguous information because it does not really give you enough uh, things if you just give the most money you don't know whether it's a place or a, or a person, right? And another uh, another challenge is, uh, so when you, when you, let's say you are talking about money uh, on, the, on, the, on the ad, right? So now it says was 155k, now it's 145k, right? So which one is the the current price, right? So now you need to identify that this is talking about the the history, now this is talking about the, the current price. So it is not sufficient to identify that this is a price and this is a price because it has uh, semantics into that. What is before, what is uh, now, right? And if you look at this, offers in high 700s, right? So what is high 700s? So these are the things that you will feel uh, you will find in day to day uh, uh, when you when you are reading. But as humans, we know what they are talking about. Right? And again, the last one is a syntactic uh, variation. Like you can use the uh, these different abbreviations for the uh, expressing the same thing. Okay? So here are a couple of uh, complexities involved in extracting information from uh, from the text. Just wanted to add. This is just a start of the problem or all challenges. Beyond that, 
there will be emotion, intention, all the subjectivity things, there will be sarcasm. So there will be a lot of things in the text that... There were facts. Hmm? Facts. What about facts? Oh, statement. So let's focus on uh, uh, one particular task. So this, this is called name and recognition, and it is uh, broadly defined as find and find and classify names in uh, text. So basically, what it does is uh, when you read the a news article, you know, uh, let's say in the in the news article you had a mention of Narendra Modi. So you know, starting from Narendra, ending from Modi, you know this is a text segment that refers to a person that you know about, right? So this task is supposed to do the same thing. So you need to identify what the segment of the text that is that has a mention of entity and what's the type of that. It can whether it's a person, whether it's a location, or whether it's an organization. Right? So yeah, it has uh, so it's like this. So here I need to identify that this is a person and this is a date, and all these are person and so on so forth and uh, so on and so forth. So Basically, you are given a set of entity types that we are interested in. Typically, they are persons, organizations, and locations. But it has gone beyond the uh, going going into uh, finer grain uh, information. Uh, so, The task, uh, the approach to solve this task started with uh, rule based. Like you will, you will write a rule like, if I see a noun after in, right? Probably that is a location or organization, right? Uh, if I see a noun after uh, before tells, right? You have the term tells. Before that, you have a noun. So probably that is a person. Right? So you can go about in that way and define rules, uh, syntactic rules, regular expressions, uh, saying that, but still your rules, rule can go in a different levels, like you can, you can have in the syntactic level, you can have that in some, what we call uh, part of speech text, uh, and uh, like you can go in the different levels, but still the idea is you are capturing the syntactic, syntax of the, the language uh, and try to capture common patterns that people use uh, to uh, extract the information. So, the set of common patterns which are very uh, popular called Hearst patterns, uh, where people uh, use them to extract hypernames, like, like if you say countries such as, that means you are giving me a list, right? That's the typical way of writing the uh, thing. So, now I know uh, if you say some countries such as China, Brazil, India, and Colombia or something, then I know. These four things are countries. Right? So people have defined such rules uh, to extract the information uh, from the text. So we see some examples here. Uh, here, uh, so when the when you are when you're looking at web pages, most of, most of the web pages right now are, uh, are they are generated, right? They are not hand hand written. So they have a structure, uh, very defined structure. So if you go into Amazon page. Uh, you will you will see tags the HTML tags uh, that tells you which what what's the product what's the price and so uh, you can extract that you can identify in the in the structure itself uh, where these things are so you can basically write a rule okay go on this path and get that thing and that's a date right and then uh, for like uh, numbers or sorry telephone numbers or email addresses uh, those things you can write a regular expression and And this is an example where uh, this particular conference that I talked about in uh, early 90s, message, message understanding conference, and this is an example that they were really looking at. Uh, 
so as you can see here, they are interested in multiple aspects, uh, relationships, entities, uh, activities, amounts, and all these things. And all these things are present in this particular text. So they are supposed uh, you are supposed to extract that from uh, all this structured field. From the from the text, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here, uh, here you can see uh, some common uh, patterns uh, that people used. Uh, we just discussed like in rotation, and if you see. Uh, person, comma, office of organization, then you know. Uh, so, this is the pattern, and you can fill these things uh, based on the based on the based on the sentence, right? Uh, but as you can you can imagine, like these patterns can work in uh, uh, let's say from author to author, the 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 writing style can change. So that means that pattern patterns will not uh, work. Unless you are able to generalize it, right? So that is why then what people looked at was okay. There are how many uh, uh, such patterns? Can we learn these patterns uh, rather than sitting down and writing uh, uh, these patterns? Can we learn that from the text? And uh, uh, yeah, so that uh, uh, gives rise to the. Uh, use of ma heavy machine learning on information extraction. So they are basically trying to uh, learn these patterns and generalize that uh, to the level that we can identify wherever you have a mention of person, regardless of what is the writing style, we can identify that is a person. Right? So if you. But uh, it's still, it is sensitive to the writing style. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So as long as. That's why. Uh, uh, so as long as you have a, uh, what they basically do is they get different kind of corpora, let's say news, uh, forums, and all these things, and try to annotate uh, manually uh, which other person person mention person mentions, and then learn from that so that we are try to cover as much as possible, right? Uh, but when you are when you are tagging, when you are annotating them, you are not learning rule yourself. You are just giving the machine okay, this is a person. So machine is supposed to uh, learn the pattern. Uh, this is 320, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one other example uh, before I go into the techniques. Uh, so, this is a uh, example where they were interested in uh, identifying this particular aspect, change of address on email. So, let's say people when you when people leave the companies, they will send a mail, you know, blah blah blah. This, I'm leaving, and uh, this is my new address, and, and that you can contact. So that is a very particular aspect of email that they were interested in. Uh, so likewise, uh, on emails, uh, people are people were interested in identifying whether email has a command, whether email has a deadline uh, kind of thing. So this is uh, one another thing uh, called change of address. So here we are supposed to identify uh, whether this is a, a change of address email and what is the new, new address. Right? So they define the problem as uh, two different steps. First step, uh, they classify whether uh, this mail has a change of address and once you identify that, they extract the, the new address and say okay uh, if this is a if this is a uh, change of address email then what is the uh, new address right so uh, you can so as you can see it has uh, two steps classification and extraction uh, same steps these are very broad steps that are followed by a lot of information extraction tasks uh, okay so let's go through uh, different techniques uh, that people have used to uh, identify a name entities in text. So I will start with this here. So as I said, uh, what they have, uh, what people have done after the rules uh, is to find out uh, what are those techniques that you have that can generalize the uh, 
the pattern. So this is example. If you read here, that is the sentence. Fred short so when quick hoans new painting. So here you can see Fred this should be a person, and this should be a person, and this should be a person, right? Uh, so this is the exact. Uh, this is the kind of uh, tagging you do. You say, you say, okay, this is a person, and this is not a person, and this is a person, 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 and out, right? But you can see here, uh, although these three things represent a person, these three uh, uh, tokens has mentions of two persons, right? So it's a person, and I mean, this is a one person, and this is a one person, right? So this tagging was not uh, distinguishing this uh, multiple persons here, so we had to uh, go with the different uh, tagging that has more information. So now the B is beginning, uh, and the, so B person, so that says uh, this is a person, and then here you can see uh, again it's B person, and the next time is again B person. So this distinguishes that these are two different uh, people. So people have uh, developed such uh, encoding techniques, and what they do is they take the uh, the corpus and identify such mentions and give this uh, tagging. So basically, you uh, uh, manually annotate there, and then uh, we use uh, machine learning techniques basically uh, to learn uh, these uh, uh, patterns and given the new text how to uh, extract that. So. <coughs> I don't know how much uh, background you have on machine learning, especially the masters. I know these people. Uh, I don't know about that. So I try to be in uh, mid level. Uh, so when you when you define the problem as uh, as a machine learning problem, you have to come up with different features, right? So you need to tell okay uh, if you have a, a like like as I said the in and then the now is a person. Uh, it's a location, right? So you need to define such features uh, when you when you go in a, in a, in a machine learning way, right? So here are different uh, features uh, that uh, people uh, use uh, to uh, uh, yes. In the previous slide, what's the difference between I/O encoding and I/O/B encoding? Uh, yeah. So here, so these are two different uh, types of encoding. As I said, uh, here you can see if you go with this tag, right? Let's say you go with this tag, you are identifying only two persons, right? Because here you have a, a person and you do, you have a, a, a boundary. Here you can define the boundary, but here you know you don't have any boundary, right? So the uh, maybe yeah. So suppose that the name of the person mentioned with his family name. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or each token is distinguished as a, a different name, person, just tag as a person, or go together as a only one person. So you can see here, right? So now, given that I go with I O B annotation, I know this is a beginning of a person, and the the next immediate token again is a beginning of a person. So that implicitly tells that this person is done. Right now, this is a new person. That's why you have a, a beginning there. But here you don't have that. That is that means that you are not able to distinguish between so and this person. What's an I O person? Intermediate. Yeah, it's inside. Is it inside. inside that thing? It is inside. Like you say, the Menzui home. So Menzui is a beginning. I means intermediate. Okay, this is inside of that. Both of names are inside. Yeah. So let's say if, if I'm only restricted with B, then it's still again B, right? So it would then be I. A new until person. unless that so particular name is to, finished. To so indicate okay, so that this is a part of that, you have yes. I. So it always, you, whenever you see a person, you start mm -hmm. first tag is B, and the next uh, whatever the let's say you have the middle name and the last name, middle name and last name will be I. Why not so <laughs> meaning 
Sue Sue is like another person name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's one name suppose like X Y Z is one name. Sue is one uh, one name and uh, Men Sue and Hong is like a, a one name for like one person. Like is it is having a two name one uh, first name and last name. That is Men Sue is a first name and Hong is a uh, last name to it. But it uh, represent one person. One person. But how does the machine know? Machine that? knows because we you know we that, start yeah. for the beginning that you are beginning the token. Okay. So B start the B B is the beginning of the person. Okay. So and I start means that it is inside that thing that we are in the loop now. Okay. After like if we move from the I, we finished by I, so we know we are outside now. But the B, B per and I per I What if Sue's name, full name was Sue Maninko? Okay, so it would be B, I, I. Same for the example. So, suppose I say that Amit and Sujan. So, Amit gets the tag of B. It's the beginning of the name of a person. And Sujan is again gets the tag B. Because it's the name of a, diff, a separate person. So, machine and not take the tag or humans yes. and not take the tag. machine Yes, then it will be B-I-O-M-A. It means exactly Barack Obama. So okay? When, when Obama fall, is followed by Barack means it's a single person, it's not two different. But if you say Barack and Obama, it means two different. What if uh, the sentence is Fred's last name is Juan? Sure. How does that so, Fred last name is Fred, right? Yeah. So, this will get a B person. Yeah. And his last name is not the person's name, right? Yeah, so and then Huang will be a B person again. Yeah, so it when you are taking two different persons. Yes. So, that's a very uh, difficult example. Right? Yeah, because MMD is doing and Yeah. So, because name of the yeah, so basically we'll tell that uh, this is you bet, first you manually embed them and then give the machine that input and give the algorithm, we develop the algorithm and say that okay now learn it. Right? So we have to manually give it a Yeah, you need to give some some set of examples. So see for actually this name is okay, the for example, name of the places, uh, most of the places are well known. So you can use that kind of shape. And apart from that, from large, very, very huge corpus, you can learn. Because the names are appear in those corpus, and you can shape them. Yeah. Okay. So, given such a notation, then we will define some uh, something called features. So you will say, uh, whenever, so here if you uh, do the tagging, this is a noun, this is a verb, noun, 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 right? So, and then you have apostrophe s. So that basically, this is a very high indication of the previous tag is a person, right? So you can use such features, you can encode such features into the machine learning algorithm and say, and tell that, okay, if you see a sequence of uh, this, like uh, verb, noun, apostrophe s, now after the verb, this segment is uh, the first. So the the machine is supposed to learn. Yeah. So when you are uh, processing this statement, is it like you have to pre-process it and remove all the punctuations? And that depends, right? That depends on whether you want to do that or not. You first uh, look at the the text, and you have to take the judgment whether I should take off the uh, the punctuations or stop words. Some some uh, in some context you need to have stop words. Some context. In this case, if we see, we need to have an and. Uh, between Sue and and mm-hmm. kind of whatever the name is, Ben Green. Uh-huh. Otherwise, we cannot say it could be. Uh, it could be yeah, the, the first name, middle name, name and last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a challenging example, right? So this is this has two names, but 
there's no uh, separator be between them, right? So this is this is a tough example to learn. So probably my guess is that once, even though you we, we give this tagging, uh, machine will annotate this thing as one person. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That is my best guess. It almost yeah. goes like yeah. this only because we won't learn that these are two names. Suppose you say that so it needs more data until and unless so we don't have such kind of a data so like. Yeah. yeah. Now, but it's a really problem. difficult example. Yes. No, it's a very real. It's not because a difficult example, but there is no context to figure out stuff. I mean, for us, it's not difficult, right? Because we know the semantics of this sentence. We know thread short to penguins, a new painting. I don't know. Like to us, it occurs. Okay, these are three uh, different persons. But how? What are those features? And how can we do that to yeah, the developer? That, you know, I mean, even for us, it's so hard because, because it's Sue's middle and last name could be that. Yeah, yeah. Because but the but the way you read it, it took us right. Okay, Sue is the one that Fred is showing. Others, the third person's book. If it's, a, if it's a voice kind of thing, then we usually have a pause. Yeah, yeah. If but you don't have it here. Right? Hard, yeah. I think we all. I think human also can guess like Sue is a. English name and then Manjohan is like Chinese name, so we can separate them in terms of the sound of the word is mixing. That's an okay, that's really chatty. Yeah, exactly. The word is mixing. The content. Yeah. No, I guess we can. Okay. Because C and C are actually, it's not only one feature and aspect that could be decolonizing It's a couple of actual features. I mean, punctuation. So let's let's stop it there. So basically, what we uh, discussed was uh, we have uh, the task called information extraction, which has different uh, two dimensions, aspects and type of data. The first one that we looked at was uh, name and recognition. What what's the definition of the task and how people approach it, like rule based, and then uh, the how to generalize that. That's the the machine learning, that's right? So let's say that we have a solution that does. Uh, the name and recognition. Right? So that, that basically says that if you give me a text, my algorithm will tell you, okay, this segment is a person. Still, it did not tell me which person it is. Right? Let's say you take the example of the the very famous example is Michael Jordan. Right? So we have a, a professor Michael Jordan from University of Berkeley, and we have football uh, basketball player uh, Michael. Jordan. So you, I have a text which has a mention of Michael Jordan, and then my name and recognition already are implied that is a person, but I don't know which person it is. Right? That is very critical. That is that is where you add real semantics into the the text. Right? You once you know this is uh, the basketball player uh, Michael Jordan, you have more understanding about the the context. This task is called entity link. Now I showed several example, uh, examples, examples. Remember the text, and then automate classification into a domain, and then say, well, uh, I, I, you know, this name now is this particular instance of a person, and not somebody else, right? There are mul multiple people by the same name, and exactly which one. So that is also we didn't in those days we didn't have the word entity linking, but that's the same idea. Yeah, I mean, like semantic annotation is entity linking, right? So mm -hmm. basically, when you say semantic part, when you put it to a specific instance of that particular name, then yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. So I think in semantic web, it is semantic annotation. In natural language processing, it is semantic. Right? So they use different terms in different uh, research. So let's discuss uh, this idea of entity linking, and I'll be using slides from Laura Agates uh, from U UMass. Okay. The first 
the idea is that I have you give me a text and I know uh, and I need to identify what the segment is and they find the the ending, right? So uh, people have approached this in two different ways. First, uh, you can run a name integrator, name integrator recognizing algorithm and identify the segments and they and say that's a person. But there are situations that does not work, right? Because name and recognition on social media posts is really, really, uh, it's really, really hard than in news media. So sometimes you need to omit that step and try to find up your own solution that does integrate, right? So uh, the idea is that you have, a, let's say, even though you have, a, uh, you have a, a mention of a person, uh, okay. I think I missed one point. All these, uh, the edit linking tasks always define with respect to a knowledge base. So if you know about Wikipedia and it's a very uh, big knowledge base which is extracted from Wikipedia and it says it has the, uh, it has unique URLs for each entity. So now let's say uh, here, let's say you have the Sujan pair. But I don't have a Wikipedia entry, right? But still this is a person. So your name into recognition algorithm will tell, okay, this, this segment is a person, but you don't have Wikipedia URL. So those things should go as uh, need, right? And if I have the Wikipedia entry, those things, you, you need to find out the, the URL, right? So that, uh, the idea is that, and here uh, you have the, the mention of North Ireland, and then this is the Wikipedia page of North Ireland. And if you are figure, if you are able to figure out that this North Island is this North Island, then you are done the, the entity, right? Okay. Now let's look at so North Island is a uh, I would say easy example, but let's take the examples like this, like James Craig. There there can be so many different James Craig's, right? So here they have an actor and there was a island uh, uh, politician called uh, James Craig. So your your disambiguation level uh, can be uh, very large, or uh, can be very large. Like United States of America, you know only one 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 thing, right? But if you say Chicago, Chicago can be a city, Chicago can be a, a movie, Chicago can be a, a football team. Like people say, okay, Chicago team, right? So you find out. So disambiguation level uh, can can vary. So the main uh, uh, challenge. In entry linking is actually the identify the uh, the dissemination. Uh, uh, solve the dissemination problem. Okay. So uh, let's go through a couple of uh, approaches that uh, people have took on different uh, data types. Uh, the the very first approach uh, is a very simple approach, but has uh, decent results. This is not only in uh, entity linking or semantic annotation, this particular approach has been used in uh, word sense distribution too. So basically what you say is, let's say I, in, op in open discussion I say Chicago, the first thing that comes to your mind is, if I don't have enough context, it's city, right? You won't, you won't think about that as the movie or you won't think that as a, the basketball team, unless I was talking about the, talking in the context of basketball. So the the idea here that they have implemented is you whenever you have Chicago you link that to the most popular uh, entity of that uh, that text that syntactic form. Uh, the way that people have calculated the the popularity is uh, for any thinking task particularly they have used the richness of the Wikipedia. Right, Wikipedia is not just a text; it has hyperlinks, it has category structure, it has infographics. So we can use all these things to identify uh, the entity. So all these entity linking tasks actually perform with respect to Wikipedia or the, the DBpedia, right? Just yes, because it has so much rich information about entities. So the task is little easier when you are given such context. So uh, to do this, what people have done is uh, they have defined measures, a uh, measure called uh, commonness. What they have done is, let's say, uh, you take the old Wikipedia dump 
and then you can find the anchor text, right? So whenever you see uh, in the text, you see uh, Chicago in anchor text as anchor text, and this will be linked to a, a particular Wikipedia page, right? right? In different pages of, uh, let's say, and this is the this is page one, and this is page two, right? And this, if this is uh, anchor text, this will link to a, a Wikipedia page, right? You may find hundred thousands of these Chicago entries with anchor text. Some of them will link to city. Let's say this is city, and let's say this is movie. Right? Let's say you have a uh, uh, thousand anchor text of Chicago. This is total, and then. Uh, you can find out what is let's say 700 is about movie how do you find that because you know that this is given that this is anchor text this is linked to the mo uh, movie so this would be actually right and then rest of the 300 is a uh, movie so this will give you some measure of popular right? whenever you use the term chicago majority time you are using that as a city so what they do is Whenever you see Chicago in your text, first let's go and uh, link that to city. That is a very uh, uh, simple. Is this mainly dependent on the uh, references being there in Wikipedia? Because, because uh, you said that every uh, reference of that it checks with the related to the Wikipedia page data. So. Is this dependent on the data being there in uh, Wikipedia being organized? In yes, the... yes. So that is why that is exactly the reason why people are uh, very interested in doing that with Wikipedia. Because first, because of that is the largest knowledge base that we have. Uh, even though that is most of the that most of that is unstructured, uh, but still they have a lot of rich information like this links, categories, and all those things. So almost all entity linking tasks has been done on Wikipedia unless there is a domain specific. Task. Like if you are linking medical documents, you don't go and link that to Wikipedia. You use uh, a domain specific knowledge bases like UMLS. Or if you are working on music tracks, you go and do with uh, music brains rather than with the Wikipedia. Just because you know that that's specific to uh, the, the music, right? Let's say uh, each Wikipedia page in Wikipedia is exactly written by one single entity. Wikipedia is like the first level of knowledge base. Yeah, it's a huge knowledge base. Take a wiki page. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so, in the uh, semantic structure, it's like the first level yes. where you go to get knowledge, and then you go from there. Yes, exactly. So then, actually. Yeah, uh, so I just described a very simple method of doing that, right? Based on popularity. And uh, uh, this is the other one that I would like to uh, discuss. And this is, uh, I think it's, this is a powerful idea. And people have implemented this and they have got good results. Uh, but they are looking at this when, when, we, then when we were conversing, you understand that we are talking about the basketball uh, scenarios, then you always say, okay, this, whenever I mention Michael Jordan, it's uh, the, uh, the basketball, right? So you are using the context of the discussion, right? Earlier we did not use anything, just link to the, the best I know of, right? So uh, the other idea was, let's say, in a, if you give a text, it is not that you have only one entity there, right? You have multiple entities in the, in the, in the, in the text. So can we use that appearances of multiple entities in order to resolve all of them at once? Right? So uh, a firm, uh, example would be like uh, you have the uh, text and you say computer science 
and then cos blah 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 and samya you say you say b and then and somewhere else you have anchor job so here people consider that as linking michael jordan as the the professor michael jordan not uh, isolated task it is the task of understanding this whole text at once right so all these things will give you some context uh, so computer science I, uh, now now if you take the the this segment of computer science you may have wikipedia page of computer science okay computer science right i don't think this will get a lot of candidates right but if you take ucb right there can be so many different entities that you refer with the term uc so uh university of california berkeley and yeah, i'm sure you have a lot of uh, cannot really think about it. Let's say you have multiple candidates here. Okay. And then of course we know it has at least two. The basketball player and the person. So now uh, it is the matter of, so this has let's say three candidates, this has two candidates, this has only one candidate. So if you see only one candidate that's resolved right you know that that should be uh, this one so now the comparison start uh, among these things now what you what you uh, what you try to calculate is what is the coherence of these three entities uh, what's the coherence basically how they are topically related now if you consider this uh, uh, the uc berkeley uh, the university of uh, uh, california berkeley with the, the basketball player Michael Jordan, you don't get uh, enough coherence, right? But if you, when you uh, say that, okay, this is uh, the University of Berkeley and this is professor, you will see a lot of similarity between these two things. This is the idea that uh, uh, being implemented and it's called joint assignment model. It is optimal, it's defined as optimization problem. And so, yeah, here they have uh, example here. So, these are the three things that they uh, found out as in the in the in the mentions and these are the candidates right so you have not the another line like we had uh, computer science they only had one example here but james Craig, you had two entities and catholics you have a wrong catholic and american catholic now the idea is if you go in this way this is not really compatible like right? northern ireland and james Craig as actor does not go away whereas this way it goes well, like Northern Ireland and the politician, uh, the James Bay and the Catholic. Right? So this is the idea that uh, they have implemented and captured as a, uh, uh, defined as an optimization problem, where you try to optimize the, uh, the probability of these three as higher coherence than the other combination. Now you can imagine, let's say uh, this James Bay has had like 100 different uh, examples, you have so many different ways to compare, compare right? Because you need to uh, calculate the whatever the, let's say coherence of all these combinations. This one in the first run, this one in the second one, this one in the third one. So this gross uh, uh, the the computation power that you need to have and the time complexity really goes high uh, depending on the number of uh, candidates. But this has shown uh, good results on as you can imagine. What is the time right? frame for this work? What is the time frame? Oh, you mean the researcher? Hmm. Uh, I think this is like early 2000. We had I uh, have seen papers, but on uh, news articles, yeah, like 2004, five. So I have slides from again year 2001 or two, where we have Athens, and we recently got Athens, uh, Athens, Georgia, Athens, Ohio, Athens, Greece. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Like a uh, question. Yeah. So in this context. Because we are having an article where we are writing computer science, ECB, all these things like University of Berkeley, and we are writing at some point it is written that that Michael Jordan he's a basketball player, but it's not explicitly mentioned. But in that article it is mentioned he visited that university. So based on the coherence of the computer science ECB, it will link this uh, Michael Jordan as professor, but actually he's not a professor in this context. He's a basketball player. Yeah. 
Yes. So how do you solve this? Yeah, perfect. Uh, that's the harder problem, right? So again, uh, you the my algorithm. I have designed my algorithm in a way that that captures the coherence of the the entities, and I did not take the features like visited, right? So this is very deep semantics, right? If you say visited, that the visitor is an external person, right? So I have not considered those things in such an example, right? So those are the things that you know. Uh, when you go into a uh, is called feature you can add more and more features it's the matter of whether you can express that feature into a encode that feature as a uh, solution to the machine and uh, the the model that good good example uh, as for you mentioned so we will see that later that for this mapping you can add more features what kind of features so if you actually make a graph of of the of uh, out of this text so you will have actually the um, relatedness features of this entity to each other or semantic features of this entity to each other. So it becomes easier that how, uh, uh, whether this entity is related and how strong they are related to each other according to that structure the in data and in graph data. On the text, you might actually have the features like co-occurrence of the words, entities, or what else should I add as from only text? Only text, sir? I mean, uh, what kind of other features for this annihilation can Yeah, you can use like, uh, basically they use different kind of signaling features. Okay. You can use all the verbs like to visit them. Yeah. No, so you have to yeah, create rules for that. Yeah. For this those are the relationship. Yes, the that, those are relationship or the co-occurred entities in the same text. Yeah. So this is actually a similar example that you were talking about, right? So it says ABC shot lost in Australia, right? So here ABC is American Broadcasting Corporation, right? Company, right? But it says shot lost in Australia. So the the Engineering algorithm will link this ABC to Australian Broadcasting Corporation because you have more context towards Australia than the thing, right? So, see, this is it says very difficult exam. So, that is something like visitors, uh, the user. Yeah. So, in anti linking, we are really depending on the, the context. If the context is not, uh, if it is ambiguous, then we are in trouble in it. Right? So, are you dependent on um, simply uh, closely surrounding information in the same sentence? Are you uh, taking care of information that may be in the entire paragraph? Are you taking care of the information that is even beyond the paragraph, the whole page, or who created the page? So there is you know extensive amount of information that is available. How can you keep track of? Um, various alternative explanations for the terms that you may have is a challenging job. And very often, um, uh, some of our researchers will have to start looking at issues where the text alone cannot give you the information, can you get information from other media? That, that may be there. Because uh, in terms of the, for this ambiguation, you are in my brain, um, utilize multimodal information, a lot of surrounding contacts, who says, what has that person said in the past? What is that person's association with all the possible explanations for this particular term? All those are interesting things, right? So the problems uh, that we've been solving have been fairly limited. Um, uh, and so this, what it says really hard example, there are in reality, a lot of really hard, really hard examples. Um, again, what the application is would uh, you know help determine if your application is essentially searching a document on the web then it is reasonable to assume that the context of the document alone is sufficient or that is the broadest possible context even though technically you may start with a phrase in which the word appears go on to the sentence in which the word appears go on to the paragraph into which the word appears go on to the document in which word appears and look at all the metadata of the documents in which the word appears or, or entity appears. You can do that, 
um, uh, and that is just when you are thinking only about the web search or when you are, your answer is a document of them. In reality, we constantly recognize something that is just not limited by anything like a web document. Right? So, so things can be very exciting and you'll have to go into different modalities also. You have to go into, um, in terms of understanding, sometimes we uh, try and see, um, let's say, um, cultural context. Suppose um, um, you look at, uh, here is an example, you look at uh, uh, a man and a woman living together. In some countries, it will have to be a married couple. In other countries, in Scandinavia, Scandinavia uh, it's very, very likely, 90% that there's not a married couple. And in somewhere else, it's all the way in the middle, all right? So anywhere, you don't know, right? So uh, these kind of contexts, uh, this is not a context coming from the uh, content. It is coming from outside that context, right? So extra thing. So these are all very interesting things to think about. Yeah. So I'll, I'll spend a few more minutes on uh, a task that we defined in Adnoitis uh, beyond uh, name and recognition and, and entry linking. Uh, so this is basically my dissertation work. Uh, so we defined this task called implicit NTD uh, linking. Okay. So the idea is that. So the idea is that let's say uh, if you look at uh, so uh, if you look at this tweet, right? So you can see new Sandra Bullock has from lost space movie looks absolutely terrifying, right? So you you know that Sandra Bullock is a uh, actor, actress, right? But it has the mention of it's talking about the the movie Gravity, right? So but the gravity is not there in the text. It talks uh, this the term movie helps you to identify that okay it's talking about the movie but not the you don't know the movie, right? So we call this as implicit uh, reference to an entity. And we were, we we worked on uh, identifying uh, such mentions and actually linking them. Now here you can identify, you can understand that the the domain knowledge that you have about uh, the movie domain helps you to uh, define the you identify that this is a uh, the gravity, right? Let's say you don't know about the movie gravity and you are not going to mention uh, you are not going to figure out that this has a uh, mention of movie gravity. But if you had the the term gravity here, even though you don't know about uh, uh, the movie gravity, you will figure out that now now you figure out the gravity is a movie, right? So here, given that you don't have the uh, the name of the entity, you are really depending on uh, your background knowledge. And some people can decode the uh, the the message, and some people cannot based on their background knowledge, right? Uh, so. Uh, so yeah, we, we define that as uh, implicit entity is an entity mentioned in the text where its name not appears, so you don't have the, the name of the entity, typical name of the entity, or it is not a synonym alias or abbreviation because these are things that people have worked on earlier, uh, or it's not a core, core account. So the previous example is none of those things, but still there was a the entity, right? So that is how we define what its entities are and we worked on this. I will show you the complexity of the problem if you want. Uh, so given that you don't have the, the name of the entity in the text, people have so many different ways of expressing the same thing in different ways. Right? So the, boy, uh, the movie Boyhood and these are three uh, faces which are in, in characters movie. So that's the director. And this is the actress. And this is a very specific uh, feature of the movie. Right? So if you don't know that uh, this is a movie that uh, shot uh, uh, throughout the, the 12 years, you are not going to identify that the, the movie boy would, right? So as you can imagine, there are so many different ways that you can explore the same thing. And this is another complexity that we saw. Uh, let's say in 2013, uh, for all, if you say, I like the new space movie, now you know you are talking about the movie reality because it's the, uh, the, the new release one. But if you use the same phrase, space movie in 2015 you are talking about the Martian, most probably. Right? So the, the knowledge that you need to have in different time periods, stage. Right? So, yeah, uh, I don't think I'm going to know Peter, but the idea that we implemented was uh, that whenever you use 
such phases, you are really depending on the understanding with your audience. Right? If I'm not, I'm not going to uh, do this for uh, the people who, who don't know uh, this thing, right? Only way that people are going to understand is because we have shared context, we have shared knowledge. Right? So we exploited uh, knowledge bases in uh, different kind of knowledge bases uh, to solve this solve this problem, and we did this on uh, on tweets and as well as in, in medical documents. So because we already we saw uh, such occurrences in medical documents as well. So this is uh, very interesting uh, phases, uh, and these are frequent than we expect it to be, uh, at least in different uh, entity uh, types. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Did he, did he assess the percentage uh, occurrence or prevalence in uh, medical text? Medical text? Yeah, like two entities. No, no. Uh, what was the, you know, in the, in the tweets, in, for movie it was 21 percent so that were implicit in your data set. What was uh, the uh, medical, what was the number? Yeah, so it's about 20 to 30 for uh, edema and sort of just for those two objects, it yeah. really varies by yeah. You know. yeah, I can talk this for like hours, so I will stop here. You um, know, um, I think that um, what is what is your confidence that indeed this is an accurate measure? What if um, um, the other entities that the doctor had in mind, but you're not able to understand even that that is what he had in mind? Oh, you mean? Doctor had in mind, but it's not in the text at all. No, it is in the text, but very implicit. Yeah, right. It is uh, the annotation in tweets is easier, but annotation in medical document is not at all easy, mm. right? Mm. It really depends on the expertise level of the reader. Yeah. So we use uh, second, second year and third year medical students uh, to do that, and uh, the agreement between them is 0.58. So that is how hard the problem is for humans to decode the information in medical documents. And there were a nice couple of examples that really shows that uh, there's a huge disagreement between uh, and it and all of them had their own uh, credible arguments. So, so this is a kind of problem, I, I think we should probably should mention this example 0.58 in the paper we are doing. Yeah. Because it, it kind of shows that uh, there's going to be a lot more of that and that the other interesting corollary is that um, uh, an individual's understanding, uh, you know, looking at the document as to what the entities are or what, what it talks about here, vis a vis what might be more of an absolute thing, where uh, what is in the original person's mind, and then utilizing the knowledge to do better than what individual reader can get, mm. is another opportunity that is. May not make sense to you. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I'll stop here. Otherwise, I'll go under thirty minutes. Easy. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I hope uh, uh, summarize into minutes. So we started with the task of information extraction, and we talked about uh, different aspects. When we talked about different scenarios that why information extraction is needed, and then we went to. Uh, the entities and entities has two different tasks, defining high level, identify the type and uh, identify unique identities to the entities and we talk, talked about uh, different techniques uh, uh, that people use in name entities and different techniques to do entity linking. Uh, yeah, so you can explore and the new task that we just talked about the implicit uh, part of that. So yeah, uh, I think this should be a good start if you are interested in information extraction or you know, let's say you are interested in entities, you can just now start reading about uh, 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 different techniques that people have used or different novel problems if you are uh, willing to explore different novel problems, uh, where the field is going now and those kind of things. So Jordan, a professor from UC Berkeley. Uh -huh. I take a hypothetical scenario where the Michael Jordan, the basketball player, studies in UC Berkeley, and you know you can say a computer science student. Mm -hmm. How will you disambiguate to Michael Jordan's thing? Mm -hmm. That makes the disambiguation a bit more difficult. 
Yeah, right. I would I would assume that in your text there will be some clues that helps me to identify that this uh, that's uh, the basketball player, right? So in your text you may say, okay, he just played the game or he just won, and all these kind of clues that might help me to identify the similarity of Michael Jordan as a basketball player in my knowledge base and Michael Jordan as a professor in my knowledge base versus Michael Jordan in your text. So if you if the text has enough uh, context uh, that clues that helps me to identify uh, which Michael Jordan is, uh, yeah, but it's uh, 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 not the easy example, right? Uh, so people like we can use uh, hope, uh, we can model the entities like um, as in my work I I already did this like you can take Michael jo Michael Jordan appears as basketball take the corpus. Take the corpus of Michael Jordan appears as a uh, professor and create the word vectors for that, right? And then take your text now and see which one is the the most similar. That is the uh, that I would say that will help you to disambiguate these kind of scenarios, uh, because in your corpus of the basketball you will find terms like play, won, basketball, but but play and won those are the concepts that you won't find in knowledge base. These are English terms, right? These are not entities. So that's why you need to go into word vectors that will capture these English terms that are associated with the particular entity. So that model will help you to identify which uh, Michael Jordan is. You don't rely on entities now, not only entities, but you rely on the English terms that we use when you're talking about. Uh, 